What would you think about meeting this creature in your favorite swimming hole? Would you believe me if I told you that in the sea lamprey's native habitat, you don't have anything to fear from its strange circular mouthful of teeth? Well, it's actually true, and I hope you'll stick around to find out why. By the end of this video, you might even have a new appreciation for this spooky fish and its amazing journey. <laughs> If you're already familiar with sea lampreys, you might be thinking that they're invasive in places like the Great Lakes and Lake Champlain. And that's true, but our story begins here, in the tributaries of the Connecticut River, where the spawning adult lampreys look for the perfect spot with fist-sized rocks on top of smaller gravel. They move their rocks with their mouths to build a nest that will protect their eggs from getting swept away by the current. Then the eggs are laid by the thousands to increase the odds that a few of them might grow up and make it back here someday. I don't have my microphone with me today because I didn't want it to get wet. So I hope you can hear me. I'm super excited that I found some lampreys making nests in the river. You can see that the rocks right under the lampreys have been hollowed out and those rocks have no algae on them. They're nice and clean, which is how you can spot the nests. I don't know if these lampreys are still alive or not, they don't seem to be moving much, but they're still stuck there in the nest. So I'm guessing they might still be alive. I'm not going to disturb them to find out, but I do want to stick the camera underwater and take a look at them from that angle. The lamprey larvae are tiny and almost transparent when they hatch a few weeks later. Then the river sweeps them away and they settle into a muddier part of the river bottom where they'll spend the next few years hiding in a burrow, sticking their heads out to filter feed on plankton. When they grow large enough, the larvae transform into juvenile lampreys with little sucker mouths, which they use to hitch a ride on a larger fish all the way to the ocean. And from where I filmed these lampreys in southern Vermont, Long Island Sound is 175 miles away. When they finally get there, the juveniles will use their sucker mouths to feed as parasites on larger fish. You're not likely to bump into one out in the ocean, but even if you did, you probably would not be on its menu. And I promised at the beginning of this story that the lampreys in the river don't bite people. That's because by the time they are fully mature and ready to return to their spawning streams, they've stopped eating entirely. They have only one thing on their mind now, and that is the Herculean feat of swimming against the current and every other obstacle on their way to a place where they can build a nest of their own. When they encounter a hydroelectric dam, lampreys can use fishways that were built for other migratory fish, like salmon and herring and shad. But they're not strong swimmers, and only a fraction of lampreys manage to make it through each dam. This year, Charles and I tried to catch a glimpse of the lamprey coming through every fishway we could find. At this hydro dam in southern Massachusetts, there's not just a fish ladder, there's also a fish lift. It hoists giant buckets full of water and fish up and over the obstacle. When we visited in early May, this bucket was full of shad.
but most of the fish ladders on the Connecticut River look more like this one at Turner's Falls in northern Massachusetts. It's a vertical slot fishway, which is basically a ramp divided into cubicles with water flowing through the doorways. It's not easy for the fish to swim through the doorways with the water coming at them so forcefully, but they're actually attracted to the current because their goal is to make it upstream to reach their spawning habitat. By the time migrating fish reach the Vernon Hydro Dam between southern Vermont and New Hampshire, the fish counts are lower because many have already found their ways into tributaries further south. The public viewing area at this location is honestly not very exciting, but we visited during a special event in June when the local community was invited to view the counting room inside. And finally, we watched these exhausted lampreys fighting their way through the Bellows Falls fish ladder another 30 miles further north. So I think it's fair to say that the lampreys who made it all the way up here to Vermont are the equivalent of Olympic athletes. And we were definitely rooting for them when we watched them work so hard to produce another generation at the end of their own lives. We were saddened a few weeks later when their nests were washed away by historic flooding. I'm standing at the spot where we saw the lampreys spawning a few weeks ago. And I'm thinking this was not a good year to be a spawning lamprey. There's a chance that some of the larvae may have hatched and buried themselves but we're hoping that next year will be a better one for our slithery neighbors. And we're also hoping that in the future, you might be rooting for them too.